Hi. Today I'd like to share with you some uh, ideas I've been uh, thinking about and, and playing through uh, recently. Uh, so uh, I'll start off with uh, something called the Fifth Finger Principle. Uh, I believe that I first heard about this from uh, Ed McGuire's book, uh, Fingerboard Harmony. And the idea here is that uh, if you're playing a chord, say with your first finger, you're playing a bass note with your first finger, normally people would just say bar cross and, and say play an, uh, an A flat uh, bar chord. But what you can do is you can create another finger by turning your hand sideways. So for example, if you were playing an A flat major seventh chord, A flat, G, C, E flat, four fingers. Okay, how do you get the fifth note? Do what's called fifth finger principle. I'm gonna take my first finger going from the fourth fret to the third fret, and that's your fifth finger. So one, two, three, four, five, okay. And then I'll also be doing this for the for the D flat major seventh chord. So same idea. So if you're in the key of, of uh, A flat, if A flat has four flats and the four chord, A flat, B flat, C, D flat is a D flat major seventh chord. So rather than playing right across here for a D flat major chord, D flat to C is going to be your major seven. So you would have D flat C, C, F, A flat. Okay. So that's the idea of the of the fifth finger principle. Uh, you can use it on other chords also. Okay, so then the next thing I wanted to talk about is the idea of uh, using this fifth finger principle to create uh, different kinds of melodies. Uh, so uh, I'm going to tie in the concept that I've, I've talked about on different videos, uh, uh, 24 permutations. So there's any number of ways you can do this. It's, it's typically four notes. Uh, you can assign the numbers one, two, three, four. So, for example, let's say I want to use like this tetrachord F, G, A flat, B flat, four different notes. So, a lot of times, like if you're if you're just playing like a, sounds pretty good. Okay, to, to, to play those notes is going to sound like a melody. But if you want to really do like a little bit of a theory geek out. And this is something that I've spent some time with, and I would encourage you uh, on a day when you've had, you know, your morning coffee or or, or whatever your your beverage of choice is, you really kind of geek out on this. So so if you think about this, F G A flat B flat, and you can write these out on a piece of paper, you know, one two three four, one two four three, etc. And there will be twenty four different combinations of the four notes. So I think what I'll do for this first chord, I'll go ahead and do all 24, but I won't, I won't do all 24 for all the, all the chords. Okay, so I kind of purposely picked out this tetra chord, F, G, A flat, B flat. So what's gonna happen is if I'm thinking A major seventh, that's my harmony, sixth, major seventh, the root, and the nine, okay? So, so notice what I'm doing here, I'm playing that melody, but I'm also I'm holding the, the the bass note, so that's going to give me kind of the sense of the harmony. F. I'll do that backwards. B flat, A flat. Okay, so then you might ask yourself, well, why use that finger? Why not do something else? And you could, okay, you could. So depending on how big your hands were, you could go. Let's say use your second finger here. F. A flat, B flat, and that would be perfectly fine also. B flat, A flat, G, F. Okay, so there's going to be uh, pluses and minuses to all the different fingerings. I think it's John McLaughlin. I think his one, one of his uh, quotes is something about uh, a big part of learning to play the guitar is to unlock some of the fingering secrets. So this, so this idea of the fifth finger principle is really the main uh, point I'm trying to make in this video and then I'll show you how to take this uh, fifth finger principle, create melodies and also create some interesting harmonies too. Okay, so I'll just briefly go through all 24 uh, fingering. So so one way to do it is you can assign numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 4, 3, 1, 3, So I'd have to see those written down. So I think I'll just do a uh, note name. So F, G, A flat, B flat. Next one. F, G, B flat, A flat. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna go F to A flat. F, A flat, G, B flat. F, A flat, B flat, G. Okay, next one. F, B flat, G, A flat. F, B flat, A flat, G. So that's six. So there's, so there's, there's six starting on each of the notes. And next one, G, F, A flat, B flat. G, F, B flat, A flat. G, A flat, F, B flat. G, A flat, B flat, F. G, B flat, F, A flat. G, B flat, A flat, F. Now, now there's gonna be six starting on the A flat. A flat, F, G, B flat. A flat, F, B flat, G. F, G, F, B flat, F, G, B flat, F. Okay. Uh, A flat, B flat, F, G. A flat, B flat, G, F. Okay, I think I might have messed that one up a little bit, but you get the idea. Okay, so then the last one, starting from B flat. B flat, F, G, A flat. Da, da, da. So as you do these, so right now I'm I'm kind of explaining everything everything to you and saying the note name, so I'm not maybe concentrating on the melodic implications here. But the idea here is as you do this more and more and you listen, then you start to hear, oh that kind of sounds like, you know, as time goes by, or that kind of sounds like some song from the seventies. <laughs> Or, or, or whatever, you, you're, you're going to start hearing nice melodies that you can use either for your improvisations or to create your own tunes. Okay, so let me go back to this. So B flat, B flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, F, A flat, G. See the system I'm using that I'm going here? B flat, G, F, A flat, B flat, G, A flat, F. Okay, now B flat, A flat, B flat, A flat, F, G. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to just freeform on these. Uh, I'm just going to hold my A flat and I'm going to be thinking in terms of an A flat major seventh chord. Okay, so I'll start off just by kind of playing some random four note melodies and then what I'll do is uh, maybe I'll pause and then I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and, th and throw in these notes to kind of fill out the harmonies. Okay, so here we go. So I'm just holding here. So you can kind of see, you have to kind of really take the time to explore all this this stuff. Or if you just, if you're lucky, you might uh, come across something and you're like, oh, I really like that melody. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll take some of these melodies and then obviously you can write them down or if you have a very good memory, you can just say, oh, I remember that melody or you can record it. So now what I'll do is I'll play some melody and then I'll kind of fill in with those, with those uh, guide tones, so the G and C. So that's like, a, like some people talk, to, talk about three note seventh chords. A flat, C, G. It's an A flat major seventh chord without the fifth. So you can put the fifth in here, A flat. You can put it in here, kind of a nice sound. Or you can put the fifth in here. So let me just see uh, if I can come up with something kind of interesting. So once again, the point here is I could use I could use that fingering, but then maybe it's a little bit harder for me to add in those those uh, uh, guide tones in the middle. So by doing this, so after I'm finished doing my melody, I have this, or I can also add in the E flat and make it a, a regular uh, uh, A flat major seven chord. Okay, so let's see what happens here.
obviously there's a lot of different things that you can that you can do here so i'm just going to go now to the four chord because it's the same principle so you can do this um so here i'll do a b flat b flat c d flat e flat so that's the that's the minor tetrachord but i'm not using it i'm not using it for a minor seventh chord which i could do I could do the same thing, do the 24 permutations, uh, kind of geek out on a little bit, and then decide, okay, I liked you know, the fourth one and the seventh one or whatever, and then you write it down or you make a recording of it, and then you can create uh, melodies, improvisations around this. Okay, so if I have a D flat major seventh chord, you see that, how, how, how slick that is? So what I'll do here is I'll just kind of, so I already, I already broke this all down here. So you, you would just have to figure out a way of organizing these so that you can do all 24. Um, so, and then I'll do this D flat major seventh chord and I'll add in the C, the C and the F note, which is the uh, third and major seventh uh, between these melodies. Okay, so let's just kind of see what happens here. So... By using this strategy, it's almost like you become your own accompanist. So I know a lot of people like to use loopers. Nothing wrong with the looper, but if you can kind of, you can kind of create yourself almost a baseline. I think I've met, uh, mentioned Charlie Hunter's name. I've had the good fortune to see him any number of times. You know, sat, you know, sat and or stood like three feet away from him, and you watch him, and he's just. So, so facile with this stuff, with the, with his bass notes. With the way he creates the bass notes, it, it lines sometimes very simple. You know, you, you you know I've watched him enough times. And sometimes it's it's what he his bass line is very simple, but the the thing that he does so masterfully is he 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 doesn't lose the integrity of the bass line. It's just like. One six uh, right, that's my that's a poor man's uh, Charlie Hunter, but you get you get the idea. Of this is so if you can take this this fifth finger principle it just gives you a little bit different fingering than if you were to use a more classical fingering a flat which is still a very very good strategy maybe i will do a little bit of a tangent here and and, and talk about that because that's an exercise i saw in some it might have been like a gid thing or something like that uh or some kind of method book where uh the person uh, was talking about holding a bass note. I think they were, they happened to be in the key of G, but it's the same principle. Okay, I think what I'll do here is I'll, I'll, I'll skip this this the low this uh, this uh, A string, but it's kind of in my way. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll come down the A flat major scale. holding the A-flat bass note. So this is sort of just another way of, of thinking about it. So I started off kind of thinking about uh, this fifth finger principle, but there's nothing to say that you couldn't uh, finger this bass note with the second finger, third finger, fourth finger. And once again, uh, you know, 
you think about what Charlie Hunter does, or think about what a classical guitar player would do. They have all different kind of complex fingerings where they're holding a bass note while there's a melody going on. So let's just see what happens here. So I'm going to come down to A flat major scale. So notice what I'm doing now, I'm just, I'm just kind of landing on the chord tones. bonus vo uh, voicing okay uh, this is also from Ed McGuire's uh, fingerboard harmony book uh, a flat C E flat G kind of a nice yeah he he suggests this for ballad you can play it you know finger style and I'll go ahead and move this up to the uh, D flat chord so it's basically like taking this voicing D flat F A flat C taking that D flat and moving it down to here D flat so, so I'm a big proponent of just kind of skipping around the, the strings. It's just, it's just kind of the way I like to play, but certainly you can play this finger style. And that, and that, and that sounds good too. Okay, so let's, for giggles here, uh, let's just kind of take this D flat chord and then kind of come down the scale. So now I'm going to be in kind of a... Uh, Kind of Phrygian Lydian because I'm going to be on C and B uh, D flat. So E flat D flat C B flat A flat G F E flat D flat C B flat E. And I'm purposely avoiding that A that A string just because it's uh, it's going to be hard for me to kind of articulate that. So I'm so I'm going to go back to this idea of holding the bass note with my second finger and just coming down the scale. non-scale non notes so uh, kind of interesting uh, it's, it's the uh, G kind of hard to reach and then you have these kind of three note kind of three note chords so you can use this to create kind of beautiful melodies uh, right now because I'm sitting and explaining it to you I don't have the the, the, the time and the uh, mental capacity to be able to explain it and create at the same time. But if you just are, are, are sitting uh, by yourself, you can just kind of take some of these permutations, you can write them out on a piece of paper or whatever, and then just see if you can come up with something. Uh, I know when I was doing this earlier, I came up with a couple, a couple that I thought were kind of cool. I didn't write them down. That's kind of nice. Okay, now, now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to switch back to my original finger. So you can do it like that with the second finger. Now if I want to put my guide tones in, I have to do some kind of crazy fingering. So that's why I'm kind of talking about this fifth finger press. See how, see how slick that is? Uh, classical players talk about a hinge bar. Where you kind of hinge, you, you bar and then you hinge back. Now, if, you're, if, if your fingers are, 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 are big enough, your hands are big enough, uh, you, you can then, you don't have to be, be just tied into this, these four notes. So, for example, I can go, fifth uh, finger. That's a voice in it. 
that's kind of part of a voicing that I use a, a, a lot. Uh, actually, we look at some of Jimmy Bruno's vi videos. It's kind of fun to listen to him play. You know, old, very old school. But and he's very, you know, scalar oriented. But uh, he, 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 I saw him using this chord here. Right, that's a great uh, what A flat, E flat, C, G, C. And that's a voice that's a lot easier to do higher up on the fretboard. So I remember when I was a young guitar player, when I was first learning how to do this, uh, when I was first learning how to do that, I was trying to do it in the key of G, couldn't do it. So I just moved it up as far as I could until I can do it. And then eventually I was able to develop the stretch of my finger. So, so the same thing with the, with, the, with the major seven chord like this. You can just do like A flat, E flat, C, G, maybe move it up to D, and then you can add that note too. So you can see how this type of playing that I'm su subscribe, suggesting to you gives you some really interesting options. Okay, now I can do the same thing on this D flat. Yeah, it's the same melody, so so that that little uh, five note piece of the scale for A flat, and then for the uh, D flat and key of A flat. So look for those kind of symmetrical or those places in in the scale where the where the scale is, where the intervals are the same. I just decided to do this four note tetrachord because I've been talking about tetrachords and kind of running into some people. Uh, uh, who does Jimmy Bruno talk about? Uh, uh, DiCaprio, I think. Yes, yeah, his, his last name is DiCaprio. Uh, I apologize for not remembering. Is it, is it Tom DiCaprio? Uh, I'll try to put that in, in the video highlights. Tom DiCaprio has a has some kind of concept about four no, uh, four notes, and I, I I didn't look at the book itself, but I, I'm suspecting it's probably something like this. Where look, look, look how nice that sounds. Uh, so you can create these melodic motifs. So then if I'm if I'm going say a one to four chord. So that was a minor tetra chord. So you can do like a major tetra chord. Same idea. Okay. So there, you can kind of make a you can make a case for if you, if that's all you're doing there, maybe you can make a case for using the second finger or the third finger. But I, I don't want to get too too. Uh, uh, off the topic here because I really wanted to sort of focus on this idea of the, the fifth finger. Do the same thing here on the A flat. to do like a, a sequence so so the sequence e flat, followed by so if you're just playing by yourself uh, you can use a looper to give yourself some chords nothing wrong with that that's a cool way to play it gives you a lot of freedom but if you can learn how to play these uh, bass notes with the scales then all of a sudden you're your own bass player Encouraging you that you know if you want to do a deep dive in a theory geek out, realize that so this little 
is exactly the same for the four chord. So then you can kind of create your own kind of melody. So that riffs are using this this uh, fifth one. So then, if you if you think about it, and this is where it gets you know your music can get very complex or very beautiful is you take each of those four notes, you look at, there's 24 possible ways that you can combine that. Like uh, sending the clowns. All right. So this is just just to kind of introduce you to this idea. I've done other videos like this where I talk about bass note, inner inner chords, and um, and then melodies on top. Uh, Lenny Bro, I need I say more. Lenny Bro, if you haven't if you haven't seen him, look him up. Uh, he's a quite uh, he's kind of like in a different level in my in my opinion. Uh, what, what Lenny did with the guitar is, is quite amazing. Uh, so those of you who are more ambitious, you know. Now they are using a little different technique. I'm kind of barring all the way across because I want to get these two notes. Okay, so thank you very much for uh, watching and it was good uh, chatting with you. Okay, have a good day.